Hey guys, happy Friday. Okay, welcome to the Bible Journal Day. Make sure you have out your Bible journals. I just got a Bible journal. Salma always helped me um, by sending me pictures. Thank you, Salma. And now I have my own Bible journal so I can show you the pages like this and hopefully that'll help all of us, okay? So we are on page 105 today, which is Life of Christ entry four okay life of christ entry four we're gonna go over all those questions and how we're um to understand them so we know how to answer them okay but first we're gonna pray we're gonna say our verse one more time because i haven't gotten everybody's bible verse videos i haven't gotten like hardly any bible verse videos this week so let's do this thing okay let's pray Dear Lord, thank you so much for today and thank you for each of these students. I miss them super much and I know that they want to go back to school, Lord, and I just pray that you help that to happen soon. I pray that you help all the people with COVID, Lord. We know that there's people in our own school that have it. We know there's people um, that are in our families that have it, in our churches that have it, and it's a scary situation, Lord, and I just pray for each of the students. I pray if there's anything going on in their lives, Lord, that is discouraging them or that they need help with, that you help them, Lord. And I pray that you help us to understand your word today and to love and glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, guys, let's do it. Isaiah, I'm not going to show it to you, though, so you're going to have to get it out if you need it, okay? Isaiah 59, 2. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Isaiah 59, 2. Pero vuestras iniquidades han hecho división entre vosotros y vuestro Dios. Okay? Super important verse to know, you guys. Okay, so what did we learn this week? Let's review all that first because um, if we don't review it, how do we know how to answer those questions, right? What were we talking about this week? Well, the very first thing that we learn, remember, is that Jesus found some of his disciples or some of them found him, remember? Remember Andrew was with um, John the Baptist, right? Some of them were with John the Baptist, and then they saw Jesus, and they're like, wait a second. Huh, what's with this guy? And when they found out that it was the Messiah, the Messiah, they were getting their friends, right? Remember, Andrew went to go find Peter. Philip went to go find Nathan. And then Peter one day was with James and John. <coughs> Pardon and they all started following him, okay? So that's how Jesus got some of his disciples. Remember when James and John and Peter were on the boat because they were fishermen. And remember what Jesus told them, put your net inside the water. And they said, Jesus, we've been doing that all day. It's not working, but okay, for respect for you, we'll do it again. And then they got so much fish, they had to go and, um, get another boat to get all of the fish because that's how God works. We know that, right? Now, um, what did he tell them at the end of this story? You're not gonna be fishers of fish anymore. You're gonna be fishers of men. ¿Qué significa que van a ser pescadores de, de los hombres? That they were going to bring people to who? Just like you bring fish into your boat, they were going to bring people to Jesus Christ. They were going to be the helpers of Jesus Christ to get more and more people to understand how to get to heaven, right? Can you be fishers of men? Can I be a fisher of men? Yes. And should we be fishers of men? Yes. How do we be fishers of men? Tell people about him. Invite them to church, talk to them about the Bible, talk to them about Jesus. Tell them stories about the Bible, right? Tell them your favorite verse. Tell them your favorite chapter of the Bible. Tell them your favorite people in the Bible. Tell them how to get to heaven, right? You can be fishers of men. After he found some fishers, he found Levi. Remember Matthew? Publicano. Everyone thought that he was stealing money, and he probably was. 
But did he do that after he met Jesus? No. He left everything and went to follow Jesus and made his life right. Okay? So Jesus now is teaching with his disciples and his very first miracle was at the what? Wedding of Cana, right? The wedding of Cana where Mary asked him to do what? Turn the water into wine. Did he do it? Yes, he did. Remember he told the people to put water in the water pots, but when it came out, it wasn't water anymore. What was it? It was wine. Then Jesus did more miracles. Remember that he healed the man with lepra? Leprosy? That was all that nasty stuff all over his body. Poor man. A lot of people had that back in the time, you guys. A lot, a lot of people. Now it's COVID, right? If you have COVID, you got to stay away from people. But before it was leprosy, you had to stay away from people. But a man found Jesus and said, Jesus, I know that you can heal me. And did he? Yes, he did. Then there was another man. Remember what they said about this man? That Jesus saw their faith. Jesus saw their faith. Remember this man? He couldn't walk. They tried to bring him in to see Jesus. It was too full. They said, no, 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 no. We have a plan. We need to see Jesus. We know he could heal that him, and he did. Remember, though, he made the people mad. Oh, those people were mad because they said, you said that you could forgive his sins. You can't forgive sins. And he said, yes, I can. I have the power to forgive sins, and I have the power to heal physically. You want to see? Get up and walk, right? And the guy got up and walked, and all the way home, the Bible says, he glorified God. Do we do that? As soon as something God does something for us, do we tell people about him? Do we glorify God? We should, right? We should. That's my reto for you today. Go tell somebody about what God has done for you lately. What has God done for you lately? For me, God healed my family from COVID, and I'm super, super glad I see that for that. What has God done for you lately? Then yesterday we learned my fate, one of my favorite stories. This it just touches my heart how Jesus loved this guy. Remember the pool? I want to go to this pool of Bethesda. The angel comes down and and agitates the water, and if you are the first person in, you're going to be healed from whatever disease you have, right? So there was a man that had been cuarenta años not being able to walk, and he used to go down to the pool all the time. But he knew it was básicamente sin esperanza because. Nobody helped him get into the pool, and he can't get in by himself fast. But Jesus found him, and Jesus said, do you want to be healed? Well, yes, but I can't get into the pool, he said. He said, you don't have to get in the pool. Stand up and walk. But remember, this time he made the Pharisees mad because he did it on Dia de Reposo. Okay, but did that bother Jesus? No. Because Jesus was teaching them that what's most important, God's love, right? Okay, so let's look at the entry today. Make sure you have out your Bibles because we do have to look up some verses, remember? Okay, so I'm going to get out my Bible. I'm going to go to Matthew 4. That's the very first thing we need to do. Matthew 4. Choo, choo, choo. Thank you for watching the video on being faithful. It's super important. God is always going to honor you being faithful to what you're supposed to be doing. Okay? Here we go. We know that the first one says write one thought from the Bible story. So what's from the Bible stories this week? So what's one thing you want to learn? Right? What's one thing you want to learn? And then Matthew 4, 19. It says, Think about Matthew 4, 19 as you copy it in the space below. Okay, so I'm going to read it now, but you need to go back and look at it later, right? So you can write it in the space below, or you can stop it and do it right now. Y les dijo, venid en pos de mí y os haré pescadores de hombres. Okay, just like the disciples. Well, what does that mean? We're going to talk about it. So, you know, you need to do the theme, the tema. That means, like, what kind of things were you learning this week? You were learning about the, <laughs> starts with a D. That's one of the themes. Disciples. Miracles. Different stuff like that. Just saying. 
Okay, who are the people? I'm not telling you, that's easy. And what is one thing you want to remember? What did you learn, you guys? What was the lesson that God taught you through all this, okay? This one right here, when Jesus said that he would make his disciples fishers of men, what did he mean? Okay, so you think of fishers of men. And I love this question. I can start being a fisher of men by what? ¿Cómo pueden empezar ser pescadores de hombres? How can you be a fisher of men? Tell us right here, okay? Then we have this over here. Read John 2, 1 through 2. Let's do it. Let's read John 1, or John 2, 1 through 2. If Miss Jessica can find it. I don't know what happened to me. Okay, here we go. John 2, 1 through 2. Al tercer día se hicieron unas bodas en Cana de Galilea, y estaba ahí la madre de Jesús. Y fueron también invitados a las bodas Jesús y sus discípulos. Okay, so what it says, why did Jesus and his disciples go to Cana of Galilee? Why did they go? Mm, I just told you. When Mary realized there was a problem, to whom did she go immediately for help? Mary in the boda realized that there was a problem. What did she do? Who did she go to? It is good to go to your parents when you have a problem. What else might you do? Okay, so it is good to go to your parents when you have a problem, but what else can you do if you have a problem? First, I mean, yeah, definitely go to your parents, but what else can you do? Okay, let's read Luke 5, 19 through 20. Back to Luke, back to Luke. Let's see if Ms. Jessica can do this faster this time. Luke 5, 19 and 20. Okay, here we go. Pero no hallando como hacerlo a causa de la multitud, subieron encima de la casa y por el retejado le bajaron con el lecho, poniéndole en medio delante de Jesús. A ver él la fe de ellos le dijo, hombre, tus pecados te son perdonados. Okay. So it says, how did the four men show compassion to their friend who was crippled? Meaning he couldn't walk, paralítico. How did they show compassion? Remember, compassion is when you care about others. How did Jesus see the faith of the four men? How did he see the faith? Ooh, it's a, I love that question. Jesus said he saw the faith of them. Well, faith is invisible, so how did he see it? He did, and it's a good question to think about. How did their compassion change the man's life? How did their compassion change the man's life? And how might your compassion change someone's life? Look, their compassion changed his life. How can you do the same thing? Some of you guys in this class have a lot of compassion. You care a lot about people, and when you see someone suffering, you wanna help them. And that's super, super amazing. And God loves that, and so don't be afraid to help other people. Okay, and then this week right here is what we're gonna fill out. This week, I want to thank God for one thing. I want to serve others. I want to think of others when I pr remember to pray. One family member you want to pray for, and what do you want to ask God to help you with? And look what it says. God is still looking for fishers of men. He has his 12 disciples, but does he want you to be a fisherman? Does he want me to be a fisherman? Yes. Okay? Excellent job. I hope you guys think really hard on those questions. Okay, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this group of students, and thank you for giving us the opportunity to be fishers of men. We love you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye, guys. Love you.